Hi everyone, it's Mike here again, and it is great to share with you a preview of our latest Moonshots Master series. This series is where we collect all the wisdom that we've learned from over 140 plus shows. And what we do is we study a particular topic and we bring all the best clips and practices together so you get your own little masterclass. And what you'll get in each of the Moonshots Master Series is a show dedicated to your personal transformation or perhaps to problem solving, decision making, thinking better, all that kind of good stuff. Or lastly, it will be about leadership. Those are the three big buckets that all the Moonshots thinking fits into. Personal transformation, thinking better and leadership. That's right. And we pick all of those great clips from superstars, entrepreneurs and authors and wrap it all up together. Now, you're only getting a preview of this. If you'd like to listen to the full show, get all the tools and all the goodies that comes with the Moonshots Master Series, visit moonshots.io, click on the members area and sign up. Be our patron. It's only a dollar a week and you'll get a complete masterclass just for you every single month. So head over to moonshots.io and become a member. But for now, enjoy the show. And welcome to the Moonshots Master Series. It's episode 12. I'm your co host, Mike Parsons. And as always, I'm joined by the man with the plan, Mr. Mark Pearson Freeland. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Mike. And good morning, members, as we uh, delve into a brand new topic within the Master Series. I mean, Mike, as a little bit of a teaser, today's really us taking the opportunity to talk about something pretty big, isn't it? That's right. We, uh, we weighed up the trade offs. We did the uh, profit analysis and we came to one great mental model that we should all be spending time studying, learning and practicing. Mark, where are we going today? Today is all about opportunity cost. This framework within the idea of critical thinking, I think has really come through in our recent productivity series, Mike, on Mm. the weekly show. But it's also something that I think most of us may be aware of, but probably haven't spent too much time digging into really understanding what opportunity costs are and the perhaps subconscious decision-making a lot of us go through when we're weighing up what to spend our time on and our focus on. And I think Today is a really a big opportunity for us to delve into opportunity costs and just understand how we might be able to take a little bit more ownership, I would say. Hmm. I'd say, you know, you could say, build on that and say, being more, I think it's almost a way of being a little bit wiser when you make hmm. a decision, don't you, Mark? This opportunity cost thing, it's about not only analyzing a particular option that we might have to take, but doing that in context of all the other options that we have. What do you reckon? Well, I think, yeah, absolutely. Right now, as we're all aware of, is a time where I think we're maybe distracted, or at least we've got more going on than perhaps ever before. We've talked about it uh, in the show previously. You know, we've got our devices pinging us all the time, whether it's emails and notifications, and that naturally... Uh, takes your your focus away from whatever it is that you're trying to do. And I think what is clear as we try and look at ourselves and judge what we spend our time on is that sometimes it kind of feels like it's all out of our control, doesn't it? You know, other people requesting things, we get dragged into other areas. And that kind of feels a little bit overwhelming, I would say, sometimes. And that's where we start to lose, mm. as we'll find out today, the opportunity to spend our time on other areas that perhaps might be more important to us. Yeah. I, you know, the, when I think about opportunity cost, the, 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 the best way I can make the case for it is how many times we make the statement, oh, if I had not only known that at the time or with the benefit of hindsight, I would mm. have done something differently. Well, I think opportunity cost is the chance to actually weigh up your options your trade-offs, their implications um, prior to making uh, those those sorts of decisions, don't you? I think it's a way of 
um, having, um, you might even go as far as saying less regret of how you spend your time mm. because, Mark, do, tell me this, do you not always find that much of your working time, if you were to look at the average day or week, the trade-offs that you're making is like, okay, I've got a lot to do. It's a question of what am I not going to do this week? Mm. I, and, and that's an interesting break from the structure that perhaps we've all, um, we naturally think we're going to do because it's a matter of prioritization. I'll do this today and then I'll come to that one tomorrow. But really, exactly like you just said, you're making an active choice to not spend your time on certain things. Mm. And, and that act in itself, I think, is very, very challenging because you're naturally uh, inclined to not perhaps, dis- or at least I am, I'm, I'm not inclined to dismiss other things on my to-do list. I feel as though I should try and get to everything at some point. But once you start to take ownership of where you spend your time, what focuses you're giving yourself uh, in these various, let's say, tasks or areas of, of focus or distraction, perhaps, then you can start to honestly look at your to-do list, maybe, your checklist, as Atul, Atul Gwande would say, yeah, and of start to uh, you know maximize that time that you are proactively focusing on achieving those tasks. And if you are on a mission, working on a big project, maybe you're really doing your life's work. Maybe you're just trying to be the best version of yourself. The worst thing you could do is allow all of the urgent things to take up your time and not make any time for the important things. Mm. So you also see a little bit of the Eisenhower matrix playing out here. What is urgent and important and allocating time to things that matter so that you can feel more fulfilled, more satisfied with the work you've done. You know, sometimes I get to the end of the week and I feel like events ran me. I didn't yeah. run the events. Do you ever have that? Oh, absolutely. Particularly in a time where you're emailing and slacking and calendars, you know, you just have to open up your calendar uh, on the morning that you're going to start your work and you realize, oh, no, I haven't got any time this morning to catch up on the work right. I wanted to do. And that's because your time is being almost uh, dictated by others who are calling your attention. And it's something that, you know, we actively learn with Cal Newport, Mike, uh, the idea of time blocking and focus uh, so that you can get your, your deep work done uh, once you start to understand what part of the day you're most efficient at. There you have it, Mark. So we've made a very good case for opportunity costs. It, it seems like it can uh, solve all sorts of challenges that we face in our working days, our working weeks. So, Mark, where do we want to open up this adventure, this rip-roaring ride into the world of opportunity cost? That's right. I think I want to take the opportunity to introduce Britt Lewis from Mr. Hancock, a YouTube channel, who's going to help us get inspired around this idea of opportunity cost, as well as understand a little bit around what the number of possibilities are that exist around us and therefore how hard it is to determine what to focus on. And that really starts with the essence of scarcity. Every day, everyone makes a variety of decisions, choosing between two or 10 or even hundreds of different possibilities. Actions tend to be the best indicator of preference of what people actually want, but in doing so, people deny themselves other options. This is the essence of scarcity. Everyone can't have everything all at once. With every express preference, there exists a next best option, something you would have done if the first option wasn't available. This is called the opportunity cost. Because you do one thing, you've lost the opportunity to do something else. Opportunity costs can be thought of as sort of regret, pain people bear as they imagine what they could be enjoying, even if they are enjoying what they are doing right now more. Another way to think about opportunity costs is money value, profit you would have made if you did something else, such as a business venture. Opportunity costs can be understood by accepting these principles. People face trade-offs. The cost of something is what you give up to get it. To exemplify these principles, we will use the following example. It is a Friday night and you have the following options of things to do in the order of how much you want to do them. See a movie with your partner, see a movie with your friends, or study. 
By putting the partner first, you have already faced the trade-off of friends versus more than friends. How was this trade-off made? By weighing the cost and the benefit. Your benefit in this trade-off is that you may be entering into a romantic relationship rather than simply keeping the platonic ones you already have. But what about the costs? Each of the above options has the cost of time. You only have one Friday night until next week. So for now, you only have time to do one thing. Both of the top two options have added the cost of spending money at the movies. However, the benefits of these options, namely being social and having fun with others, outweigh the cost, so you have placed them above the others. As stated before, for each of your top two options, your opportunity costs include time and money. How do we know this? Because the cost of something is what you give up to get it. Another way to remember this is the same. There's no such thing as a free lunch, which means that there is some built-in costs for everything, so nothing is truly free of charge. For each of the above options, you're spending your time and your money, which could have been used on a multitude of different things. If you choose option one, you miss out on the next best option, meaning by choosing to go to the movies with your partner, you're giving up the opportunity to go to the movies with your friends, and it is therefore an opportunity cost. As with any choice, you get the option you choose, and vice versa. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch, Mark. That is so true, and I think that really kind of captures uh, the spirit, if you will, of this idea of the opportunity costs, and that everything has a cost of time or money to it. Mm. And it will bring you a certain type of benefit. And um, often, I think the biggest uh, mistake I have found myself making is not so much the cost and benefit analysis of a given option, but I would say I could do a lot more to understand the kind of weighing up process between all of the different options. How do you kind of find yourself looking at opportunity costs. Do you have something similar, Mark, where you kind of, you make each individual decision uh, and you kind of look at the costs and benefits, but you don't weigh them up or Mm. like, how does it work for you? I think for me, I am probably guilty of expanding the benefits of one versus the other. So what I might end up doing is assuming that the benefit of doing one type of activity will outweigh the benefit of the other because of maybe ego or because of a false sense of achievement. You know, uh, maybe it's a better idea if I go for that next beer as opposed to (laughs) get an earlier night, (laughs) you know? And, and I think that's really the, the challenge that I run into and what I'm, curious uh, as we dig into this big topic. Hey, hang on. So, so I want to understand. So you over, you over exaggerate the benefits. Is that, is that I correct? think so. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think that's the, the lesson I'm, I'm looking to learn from opportunity or understanding opportunity cost yeah. because much like we heard in that previous clip and as you've called out, nothing is free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. Yeah. So the benefit that we often attach to maybe an alternative option may not in fact be as beneficial as we perhaps uh, want it to be. And that's only because we're not giving it enough uh, time or discipline or critical thinking to judge it. And as we're finding out, you know, you can only do one thing at a time, can't you? Do you think then that if you could weigh up and compare the benefits of your options better more thoroughly, that would help you be uh, less optimistic and and more reasonable? Like, do you think if you were looking at the benefits of more beers or a good night's sleep, and then you could think about, well, then I could wake up early in the morning, I could go to the Mm. beach. Do you think maybe it's the act of comparison would would weight your benefits better? I think so. I I think it's the act of being able to look at two decisions having uh, different outputs. Yeah. It's the idea of looking at them saying, okay, well, if this, if I do this, then I might experience uh, a slower morning and I'll miss the opportunity to go for a swim or go for a run. And by being very functional and being quite critical, mm. looking at things with a lens of efficiency and productivity, as well as 
a desire to, you know, make the most of your time, then I think that's going to be slightly easier to go out and do, to, to, to compare those different options and therefore make a choice of what to essentially invest my time in. I think that's really, really what we're going to find out today. Well, I think, you know, our listeners right now have already done a cost and benefit analysis of being a member mm. of uh, Moonshots. And I'm delighted that we can make this show, the Moonshots Master Series, for all of our members. Um, and Mark, they, they saw the cost of one cup of coffee per month and then the benefit of getting one of these shows and being part of our Moonshots Galaxy, unlocking the lunar powered karma. Holy smoke, are we on to you know the opportunity cost right here, right now, both us and all of our members? Mark, I think it's only appropriate that we give a shout out to all of our members. Yes. And when you say all of our members, it's many, many members who just keep on growing. It's clear, Mike, that there's a group of people out there in the world listening and learning along with us. And it's great to have all of you present in all of our Master Series episodes. So without further ado, dun, 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 please welcome Bob and Niles, John, Terry, Niall, Marjoline, Ken, Dietmar, Tom and Marjan, Connor, Rodrigo, Yasmin, Lisa, Sid and Mr. Bonjour, Maria, Paul, Berg, Kalman, David, Joe, Crystal, Evo, Christian, Hurricane Brain, Samuela, <gasps> Kelly, Barbara, Bob and Andre, <laughs> Matthew and Eric, Abby and Josie, Joshua, Chris, Colby, Damien and our brand new members, Barbara, Gavin and Lasse. Welcome all of our Patreon members. Thank you for joining us and being part of our uh, experience, Mike, of really digging into each of these frameworks, these ways of thinking every single month and finding out new ways to be productive versions of ourselves. Yeah. So we want to thank all of you. We're so grateful for your monthly contribution. It really is, it gives us a really good feeling knowing that we put in so much work into this show and that you appreciate the value that we create. And so, yeah, definitely a big shout out to our brand new members, Lasse, Gavin, and Deborah. We really do uh, appreciate your contribution. We welcome you uh, to the Moonshots uh, family. You are now officially Moonshotters. You can shoot for the moon. You can be the best version of yourself as we learn out loud together here. And we are really in the midst of learning about opportunity cost. And we kind of got now have set the scene a little bit with this idea of scarcity. Now let's kind of understand this a bit more and look at some of the, the real world examples. <laughs> 